This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, my nemesis has called me again. This uh, York unit is not working. The customer says that, of course, we were just doing the maintenance and then it stopped working after we did the maintenance, so who knows. Um, let's uh, dive into it. So we're gonna open this up, see what's going on. See if we blew a fuse, if that disconnect's still being problematic or what's going on. The last time I did a video on this, the disconnect wasn't making good contact, I think, if I remember right. I can't remember. And then I fixed a bunch of electrical crap. You guys probably remember more than I do. All right, electrical section's all opened up. I've got no power in there, so I come over here to the disconnect switch. I pulled the cover off. And we've got 206 volts going in and nothing going out. So, probably gonna have some bad fuses in here. You can see the discoloration, so I think we're gonna have to change this disconnect switch. But we gotta see if that's the only problem. So, um, I was suspect of this disconnect switch last time I worked on it. So, we are going to uh, put some fuses in this guy. Check uh, before we turn it on though, we're gonna check for any shorts to ground, anything that would have caused a fuse to blow. Put my meter on continuity. There we go. So we've got tone, the meter's lighting up. Okay, so let's check across the fuses right here. So. We've got continuity on the line one fuse. And we've got nothing on the line two fuse. So this fuse is bad. All right, well, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go through this unit and see if there's anything that would have caused a fuse to trip or to blow, I should say, or to go bad. It's uh, about 9 a.m. and uh, it's already 102, right about 103. It's gonna be a hot one today. We're out working in the Coachella Valley. For everybody that uh, watches my videos, I do not live in the Coachella Valley nor is my service my normal service area in the coachella valley i actually live in the inland empire of southern california riverside this customer has me drive out here to help them so this is not my normal service area i get a lot of comments a lot of people think i actually live out here i don't and we only have like a few customers out here our normal service area is the inland empire i don't know if i've never noticed this before this guy doesn't really have a grommet there's no damage to the wires but still all just running through there that's good but I do notice this like I'm just like looking around you see it looks like maybe a burn spot right there we've got no power on this unit so I'm just pulling these wires looking at them yeah it doesn't really look like there's a problem those are like oh I think that's a transformer what is that or maybe speed taps for something that's weird I never noticed that This unit is just a dumpster fire, huh? I told him to change it. <laughs> all right, just uh, got my meter set on tone, continuity, and we're just gonna go around and probe all the terminals. I'm grounded right there. So we're just probing all the terminals on both sides of the contactors. Again, we have no power. Nothing, 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 all right. Um, there's really nothing that I'm seeing here. If I remember right though, this unit, yeah, see, I remember the compressor was testing pretty low resistance. Um, what is going on inside here? Making sure I'm not missing anything. Condenser itself doesn't look too, too bad. I'm not a huge fan of that motor and the wiring going on up in here, but nothing's testing with resistance to ground. Let's open up the compressor section, have a look in there real quick. This condenser fan motor, the bearings, I don't know, it's its like when you spin it, it kind of stops abruptly, which could be an indication of a bearing issue. So that's something to pay attention to. I'm gonna look at what the current is, the RLA for that motor, and we'll write it down so that way we can test it once we get it operational. I'm gonna test the capacitors while I have the power off. And uh, this should be an 80 microfarad. We're right at 80. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and test the capacitor for the condenser fan motor now. And this should 
be a 10. 9.67, so I think that's still good. Let's see what the rating is. Minus 5%, 10. Yeah, so we should still be good about that too. Perhaps I'll test out good, but these contactors look like they have some burn marks in them. I haven't seen it under a load yet, but they certainly don't look good. Um, you can clearly see this one's not as bad, but this one right here definitely has some burning going on inside of it. I got some fuses in there. Let's hope this thing doesn't blow up. Let's see what happens when we uh, push in the contactor. Did we blow up? Wait. Why isn't the compressor running? Maybe I put the... I hate these uh, stupid... No, it's on. Not making contact or something? Okay. Two hundred and five volts going in. Oh, it's clicking when I push on the disconnect switch. It's literally making intermittent contact. That's junk. So we have 205 coming in, and then let me test it over here. Let's see. This is junk. It's just going to further cement my diagnosis of the disconnect switch. There's power coming in right here. We have nothing. No power coming in. Let's see if it blew the fuses. No, the disconnect is like falling apart inside or something. Something's broken on this junker. Let's see if we blew the fuses. Hold on. Nope. Fuses are good. That one's good. That one's good. So yeah, we've got a bad disconnect. That. So I'm going to have to go get a single phase disconnect and I'll pick up some contactors. Um, we're just going to put the disconnect on first, and then we will uh, troubleshoot the rest of the unit, make sure the compressor starts and everything, and then potentially change contactors and all that fancy stuff. We don't want to get too deep in this and find out it has a bad compressor. You know what I mean, Burr? You can see my, uh, my meter is reading voltage over at the panel, and I think I know what breaker it is. I think it's this one right here. So when I flip it, should be able to come over here. And see zero volts. Yep, that's right. I had to put it right here because it was losing connection. So, all right, now we're gonna head upstairs and uh, get that guy replaced. I absolutely despise pull-out style disconnects, but unfortunately, that's all I could get right now is another pull-out style disconnect. I could drive to an electrical supply house, but I'm out in the desert and I just don't have the time to deal with that right now. I like the pull-down style that are fusible, but regardless, um. I do want to address, a gentleman sent me this S-Wing uh, demolition screwdriver. Uh, pretty nice. I Forgive me, you didn't give me any name on the package you shipped me, um, but I remember someone talking to me about them in my, either I think my YouTube comments, I think, telling me about these screwdrivers and how cool they were, and then they just randomly showed up uh, at my P.O. box. So thank you very much to the guy that sent me this. It's really cool. Um, so I've got this guy knocked out. I'm going to get it installed real quick and uh, we'll go from there. It's pretty common to find stuff from the 80s that uh, the wires aren't sized right. This restaurant's notorious for having stuff. My personal opinion, they used six gauge or uh, eight gauge wire from the line voltage coming from the breaker panel. This is probably about a 75 to 100 foot run to the panel. Uh, outdoor ambient temperatures get above 120 degrees, so inside the panel it's going to be even hotter. Inside this conduit it's going to be even hotter. My opinion, they should have ran number six wire. Now, I went ahead and pulled six from the, the lo uh, load side, and I'm going to hook it up to the contactors, but I'll bring it up to the customer's attention. Um, I mean, realistically, they need to change this unit for sure, but... Minimum circuit ampacity on this unit, uh, maximum circuit breaker size is 70 amps, which is, blows my mind for a five ton. That's just a unit from the 80s, I guess. But um, we have 60 amp breakers. We've, uh, we have a 60 amp breaker at the panel. I got 60 amp fuses right here. Um, but it says right here, 
Uh, minimum circuit ampacity is 48 amps. So, I mean, realistically, I don't think we're gonna run at 48 amps. We're probably gonna run at 30. Um, maybe, maybe not that much. It just depends, because it is just one five ton compressor, half horsepower condenser fan motor, three quarter horsepower indoor blower motor. Eh, it might run in the 30s uh, on a hot day, but still, they, they should have just pulled number six wire to this unit, but that's just how it goes. So I'm gonna finish putting this in and then we gotta wire in the, the um, contactor. This unit's been down for a while, so I let the customer know I was gonna turn it on. It might be blowing sand downstairs. Let's hope that nothing blows up. Okay. Indoor blower motor's running, 203 volts, four amps. So we gotta wait for the cooling to kick on. The cooling just kicked on. We're pulling 35 amps on startup, 36 amps. Let's see it keep going. Forty-three amps, forty-four amps. Woo. Yeah, because it's got a load on it for sure. Fifty amps. Let's see how high it goes. Oh, condenser fan motors not running. I bet you we just went off on high pressure because that condenser fan motor is not running. That's my guess. Let's get in here and see if the high pressure control tripped. If it did, then my suspicion about the condenser fan motor would be correct. Okay, compressor runs, so that's the high pressure control, cuts it out at about 410 PSI. So we've got a bad condenser fan motor. Um, yeah, I can just tell the bearings are tight on this thing. Boy, it is hot right now. Um, my thermometer, let's put it in the shade. Let's be fair. Let's be nice. That's on the ground, 123. Let's give it a second investigate this motor so this motor i think is a half horsepower condenser fan motor yeah i should have one of these in my truck hands are kind of shaky but i made sure i took a break i've been drinking water um i use uh, every once in a while i use some of those like electrolyte boosters the liquid iv stuff and i put that in my water i don't drink a lot of that but a little bit so this thermometer says about 110 this one says the same, but it also measures relative humidity, which is about 23%. So it's not too, too humid up here, but when you add that 22% on top of the 110 degrees, it's pretty dang hot up here. So you wanna make sure you're taking breaks. Uh, I just had a discussion with the manager. I told him like, hey, I know this manager really well. And I just said, hey, if my guys are ever out here, I said, I'd appreciate if you check on them at least every hour, you know, even if it's something as simple as just calling them on their phones just to make sure they're okay. Cause you don't want to be on these roofs without people knowing you're up there when it's this hot. You, nobody wants to pass out on the roof, get heat stroke, you know. The ordeal that it would take to have a firefighter get you off this roof is just ridiculous. So get yourself down before it gets to that point. I went crazy. New condenser fan motor, cause I didn't like it. Also, redid all the electrical. I couldn't handle it. So on startup, running about 31 amps. Let's see what my compressor's doing. Compressors right here. 20 amps, really? This seems kind of high. What's RLA on that compressor? Oh, RLA is 32. Holy moly. Okay, yeah, so we're running 20 amps. So that's not too bad. So, uh, yeah, complete rewire on the unit. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and then we'll probe up. I got a giant mess to clean up. I just couldn't handle all that electrical mess. Just had to clean it up. Judging by how many amps that unit's running, man, I really, really think that the home run to the panel should be number six wire, but hey, I'm not a genius electrician, right? Um, running for 15, maybe 10 minutes. We've already got a 50 degree supply and it looks like 77 degree return. So we're cooling. I'm gonna let it run for a bit, like I said, go downstairs, cool off, and then uh, we'll definitely probe up on this guy. I have one of these stupid sloppy floppy hats that I got from Amazon. This thing's huge, but it keeps the sun off my neck, which, you know, it is what it is. And it folds up, it's actually pretty cool. Like, it folds up like this. I'll just throw it in my bag, keep it in there. I look like an idiot, but hey, I don't gotta wear a neck scarf, so it's cool. Um, 
This thing just turned on. It's within reason. It is ridiculously hot outside. In the shade, 112, 113. Um, I'm gonna let it run for a bit. Superheat's still kind of high. Subcooling is about where I'd expect it to be. Yeah, I'd like to see it just a wee bit higher, but I don't think this thing really needs any more gas. Um, but again, I just got turned on, so we gotta give it some time. Uh, 18 degree temp split, that doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, I mean, nothing's too, too crazy. We're calling for 49,000 BTUs. We're currently putting out 52,000. So we're gonna let it run for a bit and see if anything changes. But so far, I'm not too worried about anything I'm seeing. All right, yeah, I decided I watched it for a little bit longer. We're gonna put some of the liquid gold in here. This is an R22 unit. I weighed it down at the van, so add a little bit of refrigerant carefully. We don't wanna overcharge it, but just get a little bit in there, see the subcooling come up and then watch the superheat drop hopefully this is a fixed orifice metering device on this unit so so we've got it i added a little bit of refrigerant we got the sub or superheat down sub cooling came up just a little bit um superheat's a little bit on the low side right now but i'm gonna let it run for a bit i really didn't put much gas in it so we're looking good so far you can see too that outside air temperature is climbing man 118 now 117 it's about i think it's like two o'clock in the afternoon between two and four is going to be like the hottest part of the day out here and it's just brutal right now looks like too there's some sort of a fire i'm out in the coachella valley there's like smoke everywhere coming from somewhere all over there too but yeah it's brutal out here right now so i need to get my butt off the roof um everything looks good with this unit 20 degree temp split Airflow is on point. Delivered capacity is where it should be. We're doing everything we can. So that's it. I'm going to get all my tools off this guy. Well, I certainly hope that compressor makes it through the summer because I am at the point right now where we're in the heat of like the craziness and I don't have time to change package units and stuff. Like even just a simple package unit change out, I can't keep up with the emergency service calls right now. So yeah, I don't know. This is a difficult one, but you know, I, I was there a couple months ago. I, I think, I, I don't know how long ago it was. I think it was like six months ago or something like that. And then, or three months, I don't know. I can't even keep track right now. It's all just like a big bumbling mess inside my head. But I know that I had a video recently, but I believe if I remember right, that footage was from a while ago. Anyways, we, uh, we went through, did our best. I gave them the information back then and said, hey, let's do all this work. Let's change this unit. And then, you know, they didn't want to. So um, here we are now. And I didn't really give them a choice. It's like, I'm here. You need an AC fixed. It's getting fixed, you know. Let's hope that compressor doesn't take a dump. But um, you guys clearly see I just kind of lost it. I was in there, like, changing the condenser fan motor. And I was like, man, uh, the wires were just changing multiple times. They were spliced together. And I was like, I'm just done. I'm done with this. And I just ripped everything out. That unit's never had gas heating hooked up to it. It doesn't even have a gas line going to it. So I just ripped everything out um, and then rewired the unit the way that I wanted it to. So that way it's just a straight, cool unit and it's doing everything it can. I did my best. I put grommets where they needed to be. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of using those pullout style disconnects, but like I said, I just didn't have the patience or the time to be driving around looking for that stuff right now. I've been having a hard time with my local supply houses because they haven't been bringing in the brands of disconnects that I like. So I end up having to go to the electrical supply houses or ordering them online. The, the brands that the supply houses have, they're just cheap, junky. They're, they're just the same as being like a pullout style disconnect. They have pull down ones, but they're just horrible. They're junk. So I don't like buying those. I like using, uh, you know, certain types and everything. So um, I'll try to get my truck stocked back up, but I can only carry so much on my truck when I'm driving everywhere because, you know, you just it just eats on the wear and tear on your vehicle and, and just wears down your gas mileage. So I can only keep so many things in there and only do what I can do. Right. But I try my best to give them, you know, uh, the, the best value for the, the for what I'm charging them, essentially. Right. Um, I certainly know that I'm not perfect. I certainly know that I could improve on a lot of different things, but again, the whole point is, is that I just try my best. I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. 
Um, also, go to truetechtools.com. Uh, we have an offer code set up with True Tech Tools. If you like any of the tools that they have, you can use my offer code Big Picture. On majority of the items on their website, you get an 8% discount on checkout, and I get a small commission. And uh, I realized, because, I again, it's been a hot day today, I said go to my website, hvacrvideos.com. If you go there, there's merchandise available, hats, beanies, sweatshirts, all that different stuff. Check it out. A um, few other ways, if you're really, really interested in supporting the channel, you know, the easiest way to support the channel is literally just watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. Uh, there's a couple other links in the show notes of this video for PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel memberships, which are all just different monthly commitments that you can make to support the channel if you're interested in doing so. But again, it's not a big deal if you don't. The easiest way, like I said, is just watch the videos from beginning to end, okay? Uh, remember that I try to go live Monday evenings on my YouTube channel to do a live stream to answer. It's my Q&A live stream. I just answer questions that people send me through emails and different things. So if you guys have things that you want to see answered on the air, uh, feel free to shoot me an email, um, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. And if it's something worth addressing or if there's enough people asking about the same things, I'll try to address it on the live stream. Uh, and then I also go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel with my friends. Now, that is a very, very uncensored show. So be cautious if you uh, don't like bad words, okay? So, um, but uh, the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel, we go live Friday evenings, uh, 6.05 p.m. Pacific. And uh, it's just a great hang with the friends. So I really do appreciate you and uh, stay safe out there. It's ridiculously hot. I know everywhere in the country, it's just stupid hot. So be careful, drink lots of fluids, make sure you're hydrating, make sure you're eating plenty of nutrients, taking care of your bodies. Because remember, by the time you feel the effects of a heat stroke, it's too late, it's already set in and those things can be life-threatening. So be very, very cautious, okay? I really appreciate y'all and uh, we will catch you on the next one.